What does it mean to be humble? You see, in our society, to be humbled means to be defeated or depleted. And quite frankly, through that meaning, society is being cheated. Others define it as lowering someone in dignity or importance. But we are out to redefine humility through modesty and performance. Now what if I told you that the very lies we live are a testament to our being? Our antics, our actions, and the very words we speak can all be free. There's a day coming, a time coming, when everything around you won't quite look so stunning. Because this life it has its peaks, and it's oh so many valleys. And how we approach each situation will wind up shaping each reality. So do we collapse under the pressure and watch as things fall? <laughs> or do we take the opportunity to rise up and answer the call? Folding under that pressure is simply not how we work. We dig deep and push on. Some call that reaction a knee jerk. Now to succeed, we must be prepared to fail. And that doesn't mean that we are weak, but instead, we want to prevail. Still today, humility isn't a common word you hear in the gym. Everyone's out to prove themselves and suppress any weakness from within. You see, the truth is that pride comes before the fall. And when we recognize this, we enable ourselves to answer the call. Work hard and stay humble through our faith and our fitness. This is our mantra and we want you to witness the change that occurs when we set aside our pride and strive to live a life like he who died. For if we're always on top, we're bound to plateau. Being humbled by life only allows us to grow. Now what if I told you and what if you believed that to be humble is actually to receive? A gift given to us to keep us grounded. A perfect chisel to chip away imperfections until we're rounded. A gift that reveals that there is far more to life than simply what we can see. And far more to us than we might have ever believed. You can do far more than you imagine. You can do far more than you know. And sometimes, being humble is God giving you a chance to grow. And that's what we call faith. It's got a way of humbling us too. And through this faith, I believe in a man who died on a cross for both me and you. You see, he paid the ultimate price to give us new life, ignoring humanity's anger, hatred, insults, and strife. Before the cross, he stood humble, having lived a life of perfection. But here on earth, it seemed that all he'd faced was rejection. And when I learned of the actions that he took, it undoubtedly changed me. In fact, because of it, I am humbled daily. Hey guys, welcome back to Reset. We are so glad that you guys are joining us each week to dive into the Word and find out what our mission is. Last week, a big thank you to Pastor Ryan for opening up what the Spirit has to do with our mission and the power that the Spirit gives us as well. Massive thank you for that. This week, we've got my good mate, Pastor Rick the Stick Mill from Brisbane. He's going to help us understand what the things that we have, the talents, the gifts, everything that we have, it comes from God and it's not our own doing. So thank you, Pastor Rick, and we look forward to hearing what you have to say for us today.
Have you ever tried explaining social media to your grandparents? This is what I kind of think it would be like. So Grandpa, have you heard about Instagram? When I was your age, the only gram was a telegram. Hey Grandpa, check out this thing on Snapchat. When I was your age, the only thing that used to snap were your fingers. I wish I could still do it. My skin's too dry. Hey Grandpa, want to do something funny for TikTok? Back when I was your age, the only thing that went TikTok was a clock. Hey Grandpa, one of my friends just said this on Facebook. The only time your face hit a book when I was your age was when you fell asleep at your school desk.
We hope you've taken up the challenge of putting some Bible words to memory. And this series Bible verse has come from Isaiah and it says whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice telling you this is the way, walk in it. And it's a crucial verse when it comes to mission because without that guidance, our mission, we might be going the wrong way. But that's okay. God can still use what we do. Let's hear what Pastor Rick has to say about using all we have in our mission. Good morning, Victoria, young people. It's so good that I could be here today to um, have a chat with you and have a talk with you. I understand you guys are doing it really tough. And uh, we are up here in Queensland, are just thinking about you. My name is Pastor Rick Meal. Um, I'm a chaplain at North Pine Christian College, which is on the north side of Brisbane. Um, we have a school here um, of around a thousand students and, um, and yeah, just so blessed that I could uh, join you from this space today. Um, thank you so much for um, giving me the opportunity to speak to you guys. Um, today I have the, the joyous act of speaking to you about life in mission, but looking at the angle of um, life of humility. And the key thought that I, I really want to share with you guys today is that as human beings, it's natural to focus on ourselves. Like that's a natural thing to do. But Jesus teaches us something very different. He actually teaches us to be humble and to focus on others. And today we're going to get into it a bit. We're going to talk about some of this, this stuff. Um, and our key, key text we're going to talk about today is Matthew 20, 25. And we'll break this down a little bit further on in, in, in the in the talk, uh, and it, Matthew 20, 25 reads, and whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. And that's a pretty interesting thought, and we'll, we'll break that down later. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and give his life as a ransom for many. Um, I grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist church as a young person many years ago, um, as you can see. I'm in the older bracket now, but in my young days, I, I, I used to love going to church and being involved. Um, I, I grew up in a, in a little place called Kyogle in North New South Wales, and um, I, I, it was an interesting journey, but I'm not going to tell you all of that, but what I want to talk to you today is about how my journey actually, I, I've learned how to be humble in a very hard way, in a very difficult way. Um, and as I grew up in the church, I grew up in a very strict, sort of very um, rule-based, rule-orientated church at that particular time. And um, I actually, I started to take on board a lot of those conservative, those kind of like really strong rule-based points. And it led me down the track to being the opposite side of humility. It led me down the track where I believed, I actually believed that I could be perfect and I could set foot into heaven. I actually believed that I could get to a stage in my life where I would raise the bar so high, I continually raise it so that I would journey towards that and someday um, I would land, land in heaven next to Jesus. Um, and as you can tell, like that's a very sort of rule-based analogy a very rule-based kind of thought. And, and my, um, my story soon after a period of time, I got to a point where I just couldn't reach that bar. I could not reach it. And it was very ego, egotistical of me. It was like very, um, I thought a lot of myself thinking that I could be perfect. Uh, and as a result, raising that bar, I ended up walking away from the church and walking away from God, more importantly. And, um, and I went out into the world. Eventually I came back into the church back up here in Queensland and I discovered this thing called grace and love. And God set to task to actually retune me. And this is where he first taught me the, the number one rule of being humble. See, back in my, my original journey um, where I thought I, I could be perfect. The problem with that is that often when you think that you can reach a certain stage or if I follow these rules, get to that spot, then, um, the, then heaven can happen very quickly. But as a result of like leaning towards that, I found myself poking holes at people and actually saying, hey, you need to get yourself in order. Bring yourself up to my standard. And so there was this pastor, Pastor Wayne French, 
uh, who was the youth director of North New South Wales at the time. And I went up past Wayne French. I actually tried to get him out of his job because of um, the music he was playing in the youth tent and a few other things that were happening in his life. And, and I thought that he was heading down the wrong path and I tried to, I thought it was my job to actually straighten him out. Well, um, it didn't go very far. He took it very well uh, at the time. Um, I tried to get him out of his job, so it was, it was, I was actually gone in a very bad way. When I left the church and came back into the church, God called me into ministry, of all things, to be a pastor, which I really didn't want to go down that path. And I remember um, when I eventually, after a long period of time, said, yes, I'm going to, go to, I'm going to be a pastor. I'm going to go to college at Avondale, and I'm going to set foot into that space. And then I went off to college and I, uh, my very first day I'm at college and I walk in past and I see this door and on this door has Pastor Wayne French. He was the chaplain of the college at that particular time. And my heart sunk as I remembered what I had done in my past. And here I was now, you know, I, I knew in myself I was fully changed, but God actually started to put this humility on on top of me, he actually pressed it down upon me where I needed to go and say sorry. See, humility, there comes this side of empathy, I believe, this, look, saying sorry. And um, I, I, I ate humble pie, so to speak, and I went into his office and I said, hi, Pastor Wayne French, do you remember me? And he remembered me from, from those days and I proceeded to, to tell him um, that, you know, look, mate, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. And it was at that point that I understood that confessing and being sorry for things actually is a part of humility. It's actually part of being humble. Um, it was a big lesson I had to learn. Um, but as we think about this topic of humility and, and being humble and what does that mean, it's it sometimes can be overwhelming. You know, it's naturally, it's a natural thing for you and I to, to think of what we need and what we want. And, and life can be all about us. And we look out into the world and we can see all the various things that, that are out in the world. Um, they focus on us, you know, like what I can get out of it. You know, can I have the latest tech? Can I have the latest iPhone? Um, I'm looking forward to this one to come out, by the way, the iPhone 12. But, you know, like it, it becomes a part of that, that wanting, you know, this ego thing. I've got to have the latest thing. Or maybe I just want to be like a basketball star. This was like one of my goals. I wanted to be, I wanted to be, you know, like a basketball star like Jordan. That was my, that was my hero growing up. Um, and I wanted to go down and I wanted to play basketball and I want to be a star, you know. But that could be part of what we want also, you know, that uh, egotistical thing that w- what we get out of it. Maybe, maybe what I need is I want an A in mass. We always love getting A's and an A in mass might be something that I, I think I, I really want and you, you put all your efforts into that space. Or maybe a brother fights with you. Maybe you get into this space where you're continually fighting and it all becomes about yourself. You're self-absorbed and you're fighting with your brother. Maybe... Maybe a teacher yells at you too much and you think, oh, it's the teacher's fault when you've probably done something to stir that problem up and we don't see it, but it's the teacher's fault, someone else's fault. Like I did in my, in my first walk, it was Pastor Wayne's French's fault while the young people weren't, you know, become connected to God and I blamed him when all I needed to probably look is at, you know, myself in my own walk if I was truly truly humble. Today I've got an illustration to show you guys um, about what's being humble. So if you like balloons it's good but if you don't like balloons maybe you just need to sort of turn away for a bit. But often um, I want you to think of yourself as the balloon and you know often we put you know some hot air into that balloon and you know if we're thinking about some of these things that that we've been talking about um, you know in humility we're thinking about some of these egotistical things, hot air comes in and we continue to pump hot air. But if we allow Jesus to come in, if we allow Jesus to be a part of our life and absorb everything around about us, he teaches us what it means to be humble and therefore be a servant of him. And he brings our big heads down and he 
makes it smaller and he humbles us. This is the role of what Jesus, the Holy Spirit, does. But if we can, and, and eventually we come back to, to normal, but if we continue to add hot air, you know, we need that latest tech and um, I want to be that basketball star and it's always someone else's fault for whatever those problems happen or we just continue to put hot air in and continue to put hot air in, you know, until we're full, we're just so full, our egos, our heads can't even fit through the door. Um, eventually, like in my first walk, there's this thing that happens. And we pop and explode. And this is what happened on my first walk. This, this, my head just exploded. I, I thought I was so good. I was egotistical. I was, I was full of it all. And all that Jesus was trying to teach me was what it meant to be humble. And I wasn't doing the right thing. But Jesus offers a different way. He offers a way of humility. Uh, the world around us has a different perspective on this humility thing. In fact, you know, the world around us, you know, tells us we have to show ourselves off if you're, you know, a professional athlete or if you're an actor, it's all about me, you know, or even politicians, you know, become egotistical and becomes about them, um, you know, even to this point where, where we want this status of devices, you know, like, we, we, we can show our status, our, our ego by how much, how much tech we have and how much we, we see. Or maybe it's a social media thing that's actually pulling you away from being humble. And, and in social media, we see that everybody posts their, their most favorite picture of themselves or, you know, like they never share the bad things. They always share, look, look at the meal that I just had and it's up on Facebook or Instagram or whatever it would be. TikTok, it's about the dance that you can do and so forth and so forth. Social media is actually just telling the world about you and it's all about you. And as a result, humility um, becomes misunderstood. You know, it's kind of in the background. In fact, humility is something that we see is, is something that's probably looked upon as a negative thing in our society today. You know, someone who stands back is, who's allowing everybody else to be in the limelight, who sits back and, and watches it. In fact, in fact, I looked up the dictionary term to find out what humility is, and I discovered something pretty cool and I'd love to share with you guys right now. You know, the first part of that is that, you know, to be humble is an, is an adjective. In the dictionary.com, it says, not proud or arrogant, modest. It's not, it's not those things. So when you look at that, that's a good thing. Yeah, right. It's good to be not proud. And you can see how humble fits into that. But then it goes further into the definition and it goes on saying having a feeling if insignificance or inferiority, um, subservience, that really weird word it talks about there. In other words, it's giving, all of a sudden we see like a, a, a bit of a negative scene. And then it continues on to say humility is low in rank. Low in importance and status, quality, lowly, what? Even our dictionary looks upon being humble as lowly. I, I have to like disagree with this. This is what the world thinks of being humble is all about. I actually think it's totally different. I, I see it different. I think Jesus actually came and showed us a, a different perspective. But like... The question I have to ask is what is true humility? What is true humility? And is it really all that important? Well, Jesus showed us something really powerful about his life. You know, he was a, the humble servant of Jesus. You know, before, before coming to earth, Jesus was at the right hand of God. Like that's where he lived. He was king of the universe. He created everything. Uh, you expect that if Jesus came back to earth, that he would be this amazing ruler, powerful king, use all the power that he has to actually show who he was. But we see something totally different. That's wrong. That's not what Jesus did. In fact, Jesus came back and was born in a stable or a cave, depending how you want to interpret it. He was born in this dingy, 
dingy part of the world. He was born into a community of Jewish people, a lowly race, not the Roman Empire, who was the, the king race at the time, which you would have thought that he would have been born into that race where then he could actually show his power. But in fact, he's born as this low class. And in fact, his adult ministry, we see him, um, really, he's like this homeless preacher teacher guy. He has no home. He just travels around. And so he, he takes on this different, totally different take, this humility. And in, and in short, he was the humble, humble person. He, he did it stop there. You know, humility was at his core. And in that key text we looked at the start, in the beginning part, it talks about Matthew 20, 25. It says, And whoever wants to be first among you, reading from the NLT, by the way, whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. What? Like, you know, connotations of a slave today is, is pretty low. In fact, we, we look upon slavery as in a really negative term, and that's just not, not right. But back in Jesus' time and back in history, slavery was actually just a part of, of life. Um, but slavery was lowly. So Jesus says, if you want to be like great in his kingdom, you have to be like a slave. Like it kind of like, I don't know about you, but that kind of confuses me. It's like, is that what humility is? It's like putting myself towards the back behind everybody else. What does that mean? He goes on to say a little bit further on to the text. It goes, for even the son of man, this is Jesus talking about, even the son of man came not to be served. So he didn't come down as the king ruler to be served by others, but he came to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus flips it on his head. He doesn't need the power. He doesn't need the kingdom. He doesn't need the rulership. He just comes to be a servant because he wants to teach you and I what it means to be humble, what it means to be um, a, a, a lowly, like a, a, a person that, that, that teaches others um, what it means to be humble. Um, and he starts at that. He, he um, you know, you think about some of the things that he did. He washed the disciples' feet. Like, just think of that one act that Jesus does in the upper room, washing the disciples' feet. You know, it talk, talks about there in Matthew. Like, to do that, that was the role of a servant. So as people would come into the home, there'd be a designated servant, which you would never see in the home hardly, but they would, their role was, as you walked in, to sit you on a chair and wash your feet. Jesus takes that role off the servant and he tells the disciples, I'm trying to teach you something here. I want you, I want you to also do this to others. But Jesus shows that, you know, washing disciples' feet. He also shows um, the tender needs of others because you look at what he did when he was on this earth. He, he healed people. He healed the sick. He went in and healed whole villages. Um, he, he, was, he was always with the the downcast and the people who were not respected um, in community. And he teaches us that that's where we need to be looking out into mission and to not just to look at our little, you know, safe groups, but to actually look for people who are hurting and troubling. He teaches um, us also to put others first. He taught us that to share with others. And when we put others first, um, it actually teaches uh, others around to be humble and people want to be around that it's like infectious it's the thing that you want to be in Jesus did all of this for us but humility is not going on our own humility is 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 not something that you just sit back and let everybody else do Jesus never sat back if you look at his life he was out there on the front line you know doing his thing humility is not going out on your own and in fact, today I've got a little demonstration for you to kind of show how that, how that works. So I'll just bring this table in. Um, and I want you to imagine that this is you. And, you know, you're humbly trying to, to do what is right. But if we continue to, you know, to try and do what is right uh, on our own and not in the community with other humble believers, but if we just try to do it on our own and the weight of the mission that has to go ahead uh, and the process of that, the weight of that mission to reach out to others and it's just us on our own in a community, when we put the weight of that onto it, as you can see, it 
crushes the can and you're left flat and without sort of anything at all. But imagine, just imagine for a moment if we were able to, you know, say together, if we were able to, you know, say someone you know, reached out to the community with a food program. We might have others who reach out to the community through teens. We might have others who reach out to the community through children's, you know, programs. Others that like greet and meet at the doors. Maybe, maybe you're good at, you know, sharing to your friends what Jesus does. Maybe you just love to to, to talk to God and, and be close to him and be an example. If you do all of that together, could you imagine? And you put the weight of mission onto, you see what happens. It actually creates this foundation. It, you don't, and no matter how much pressure I put on there, it holds up, it's strong. But if we continue, continue to at other ministries, you know, people who look after, um, you know, people through, through phone calls to see how they're going through this time of, or pretty COVID, you know, heaps of bad stuff sort of going on. Imagine, you know, if we're able to do, you know, and we join together as another community and we're all together as one and we bring the weight of mission and we create this, this building of, of, of growth together and strong, not crushed under the weight of that mission. Could you imagine what that would look like if we could do this, this is what Jesus intended. This is how Jesus, he wanted mission to be driven to the whole world with through humility. This is how, why he formed uh, disciples, why he, he took, um, you know, those who weren't all together. He took those that were broken, um, tax collectors, those who were, who were not looked upon into the community as the best, you know, type of people. He put them together as one and he made this massive community of believers. Imagine if we did that in your space, you know, in this time when we're all locked down in Victoria and, and there seems no end to it. Imagine if we were able to bring community together in some way through you as a group, not on your own, not standing behind, but as a group together. Imagine what that would look like. Imagine what humility looked like. I wanna challenge you guys today to take up the mantle and join together. You know, you guys have been on a journey for the last four weeks talking about mission and life in mission and how that works. And we finished with this, you know, being humble thing. Um, humble, being humble doesn't mean that you have to be downtrodden. Being humble doesn't mean that you don't have to be good at something. Being humble means that when you bring those gifts together in one space for Jesus and Jesus only, um, it brings it together as one. Imagine what that would look like. Um, I want to challenge you guys to come together and to be as a community of humble believers. Will you do that today? Will you take up the challenge today? Amen. I see you there. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, God of the universe, um, just love teenagers. And I love the way that they, they interact with each other and they come together and, and there's no strings attached. And I just pray, Lord, that the young people that are watching this, Lord, that every head that is bowed right now, that you will bless them, Lord, that you will love them, that you'll look after them, that you'll be with them. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that you do in our life. May you continue to go before us, keep us safe, Look after us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope that you've been blessed by this today. I know I have just in the preparation. May you have a great day and a great rest of your week. God bless you all. Catch you later. Well, this week we didn't have anyone submit any videos for the Minute to Win It Challenge. Don't forget to film yourselves and send it in to us and you guys can feature on an episode of Reset Middle School Church Online. Spoonfrog. In this challenge, a modern day culinary catapult, the teaspoon, will be used to launch three teaspoons into three awaiting glasses. Warning, do not attempt this challenge at the dinner table while mom is watching. Failure to complete this task in 60 seconds may result in elimination.
Do you guys know what a definition of a disciple is? A disciple is someone who is the follower of God, a follower of Jesus. But it, it just doesn't stop there. A disciple is someone that goes out and makes other disciples. And that is core to our mission. The mission that Jesus gave his disciples was to go out and make more disciples. And that's the challenge that we give you today as well. Go out, make more disciples. God bless. See you next week.